This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a Harkin Lazy Jack kit. This is a great kit for those of you that want to uh, reef and douse a sail quickly and have it flake along the boom. We're going to run Zach up the mast to install the uh, two jack lines, the primary pieces of the jack line. This is a center punch that will help him get the uh, holes for the rivets started accurately. The rivets go in here. Tape goes in so that we can hold the templates to drill for the rivets, hold the, those templates in place, and then the rivet gun, and of course the drill with a uh, 1364, I believe it was, uh, bit. It says in the instructions what uh, bit size to use. It's the same size as the barrel of the rivet. These two templates come with the top climber. One's marked starboard and one's marked port. And the, the idea is to get the uh, holes for the rivets placed accurately and also at a slight angle. And so you use the center line as the reference for the center of the mast and tape this in place and then uh, center punch the holes and drill them. So that's going in the bag too. We'll be sending Zach Grant up the mast. He's going to be climbing the mast with the ATN Top Climber. It's now called the ATN Mast Climber, a little bit better design. You can look that up if you'd like. He takes the tape measure up, drops it, realizes he needs it again, puts it in his mouth, drops it, and then he has to hold on to it with his hand. We'll skip ahead and show him now at the appropriate spot on the uh, mast. To determine the appropriate spot on the mast, use the Harkin instruction manual that's included with the kit. Use your P or luff measurement and it will tell you exactly how high up to measure. For our Seaweird 24, our P is 25.92, so we're measuring up 18 feet 2 inches for our location. Zach locates the correct template, this is a starboard template and then he uses the masking tape to uh, tape it onto the mast at that appropriate spot. This template that's included in the kit will clearly illustrate the mast head, which portion of the template should be facing up. You'll see that when you uh, receive your kit. Make sure you put it so that it's vertical and in the center of the mast. Zach no longer needs the tape measure, so he lets it fall. You'll put the other template on the other side directly opposite of this one. Make sure this template is straight. And now he's switched to the port side and he will tape that template up just the same as he did with the starboard side. Now he'll take the hammer and the punch and put it on top of the holes that are on the template and pre-punch holes that will be used to help guide our drill bit into the appropriate spot. The same procedure is done to the opposite side. Now Zach will remove the template and get ready to drill the holes into the mast. We no longer need this template. We'll now use the electric drill in the appropriate size drill bit and drill those holes on each side of the mast. Believe it or not, we get all the way up here and realize we have a crappy drill bit. So Zach has to come down, we have to go to a hardware store, and we have to buy a better bit because we don't have a bit in the appropriate size that's sharp. And so we have to do this all over again. Here he is on the following day doing the same procedure. All right, now we're just drilling those holes. We're not going to show this whole procedure here. We'll attach the uh, tang starting from the center hole. So Zach's looking for his rivet and his riveting gun. We are not using a heavy duty riveting gun. We're just using a standard riveting gun that you can purchase from any store just to show you that it can be done. 
these are stainless steel rivets and they are extremely hard to set so you're going to notice here Zach uh, is going to require a lot of his strength just to set this uh, rivet that's quite normal you may want to consider buying or renting a heavy duty riveting gun but just so you know you can do it with a standard riveting gun as you see Zach doing it here now Zach has never set a rivet in his life so this is the first time he's set a rivet and I'm sure that he will not want to do it again but typically rivets are not made from stainless steel like these are so these are tough to set We're not going to cut the film here because we want to show this whole process. Now, Zach takes a little bit longer than we think it's required, but we have a lot of fun laughing at him too. So I'm not the strongest person in the world. Actually, when we uh, start setting the grommets on the uh, boom, we also notice that it takes a ton of strength. There he goes. He did it. Now he only got five more to go and here he is on the opposite side doing the same procedure we are definitely not going to show him doing each one of these so we're going to skip ahead now okay obviously each side has three holes so each side has three rivets six rivets total once you're done with that you can climb down hey where are you going Zach go up there to the top <laughs> there you are Okay, come on back down. Thanks for doing that. This is the line that will be used to cradle the sail, uh, the lower part of the sail. It'll go underneath the boom in two uh, strands and up to the, the uh, uh, jack lines that we've just installed on the mast. This is the turning block that will be mounted on one side, the cleat, and then the hardware. And that all comes as part of the kit. The Loctite is especially important if you're not using rivets. If you're using screws, then you'd want to use the Loctite that comes with the kit. We're going to be using rivets, so we're going to put that aside and use it for some other purpose. The cradle line comes with an eye splice already in one end. We'll be installing that eye splice here to the port side. And then we're going to mount uh, the turning block and the cheek on uh, 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 the opposite side. So. I'll be using a strap eye to hold this uh, eye in place. But first I need to get to the end of the cradle line. Okay. It's pretty bad when your grandkids are taller than you are. Okay. And this goes back under the boom this, and then this one goes up through the other. Okay, right now all we have to do is install the hardware. So this is going to go back here like this. We have plenty of line. Oh, they set lots of line. Okay, so we're going to mount Strap here. Our E measurement on this uh, Seward, uh, Seward 24 is uh, 10 feet 4 inches. So I'm going down this chart. Here's uh, one row is 10 foot 1 to 10 6. That's the one I want. And the first, the forward point for the dead eye and the uh, uh, cleat is 2 foot 3 inches. The second measurement is 6 foot 6 inches. So 2 foot 3 is right here. This measurement should be taken from the back of the mast. So I'm right there, I'm back at, on the back of the mast, two foot and three inches, I want it right there. I'm just using the center punch to make a temporary mark. I call it an eye strap, they call it a dead eye. And uh, here's my, now one thing, when you do this, you've got to be very careful to get the spliced eye in the dead eye before you mount it. I'm going to use rivets so I can't undo it to put the, the uh, eye splice in place. I'm going to use the center punch. Mark the holes.
Jim will use a standard riveting gun here to install these stainless steel rivets. Obviously a heavy duty riveting gun would work much better but this does work. Here it is when we're done. For our boat we're going to measure down 6 foot 6 inches for the boom cradle strap location which will be the opposite side of the boom, the starboard side. We've marked and installed some of the hardware on the starboard side. Let's now discuss it. The order you do this uh, hardware installation on the boom is first uh, a strap eye on this side. That's where the eye of the rope is affixed. Then you do the cheek block on this side and it can either face this way or it can face that way. It depends on whether you want your cleat to be forward or aft. Instructions go into that in detail. I've got one screw in it uh, temporarily just holding it in place. Uh, and then you put the strap on the aft end of the system. This strap eye is to hold the loop that comes under the boom, the loop of line that comes under the boom in place aft. The placement of all this hardware is indicated in a, uh, a chart that's included with the instructions. That chart gives you the placement depending upon the length of the boom. Okay, so I'm going to finish installing this cheek block. I'm using a an 8 by 32 uh, tap and a machine screw to do this. The rivet doesn't work too well because the nose of the rivet gun doesn't go into the opening here in the cheek block. So I just used my drill bit, a number 29 drill. Now I'm going to use the tap. Again, it's an 8x32. The screws for this come in the system. They also send rivets, but as I say, my rivet tool won't, uh, won't work in the cheek block. All right, so I've tapped it out. It's very soft. It's just aluminum after all. And here's the little machine screw. I'm going to put it in and be done. Okay, now I've already put one uh, screw in the uh, cleat here. I'm going to do the second one. I'm using the screw that came in the kit, uh, and they recommend an eighth inch bit, and it turns out that the 29 bit, which I used for the machine screw, is very close to an eighth inch, so I'm going to drill this hole. Okay, and now this takes a Phillips. These screws are just long enough to go through the thickness of the boom so they don't penetrate inside, thus possibly interfering with the uh, passage of lines that run all the way aft on the boom. Okay, it's done there. Now one more thing, we have to fix the strap in the back. And for that, I'm going to need a 1364 bit because I'm using uh, uh, rivets for this strap by. So I'm going to take my number 29 out, put my 1364 in. These rivets, by the way, are stainless steel. They are very tough and extremely strong. They also require a good deal of muscle <laughs> to install them. They may, they may make me look bad, we'll see. Ah. All right, I've already put one rivet in. That's pretty much level. Okay. Ah.
here is the nut. Ah! <laughs> I... Oh my gosh, and to think I sent my grandson up the mast. He had to do it on a bosun's chair. And I was making fun of him because I thought he was a weakling. He's a lot stronger than I am. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to raise the sail. I don't have the topping with the uh, fast. Normally you won't because you want the sail to flat. We got this video done just in time. You can hear the thunder in the background of storms rolling in. In the written instructions, it does talk about using shock cords at the lower spreaders to help hold the lazy jacks out to make it easier to raise the sail. That's an option. You can adjust the jack line, and that's very handy. For instance, if you're in port and you need more headroom, just pull up on it. You can raise it a lot higher than the topping lift and secure it. and it stays out of the, the way of the cockpit. You can also lower it, of course, beyond the normal spot. Uh, that's the top of it, let it take most of the uh, stretch. That's all there is to it. Order the Harkin Lazy Jack System Kit from Sailrite, available in three different sizes for different size boats. I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.